Most people perceive and often define themselves through the commonalities they share with individuals immediately around them or those they choose to associate with. They often refer to their shared experiences as a baseline to explain events occurring in other parts of the world. Here's a brief discussion of how a self-serving bias can poison and inhibit cooperation in a democracy. Welcome to 4C's One Family. Observations promoted aggressively through one-way thinking decision-making processes, which usually come from bias information networks, feed something called a self-serving bias. Now the question is, what is a self-serving bias? A self-serving bias forms when an individual refuses to admit that an opinion, decision, or thinking process he or she relies on or even evangelizes is flawed or simply manufactured. Someone with a self-serving bias, often without investigation, usually blames others or an external source for an unfortunate event or situation they find themselves in. They may do so to protect their pride and self-esteem. However, they become more than willing to accept praise for any accomplishments, even if not deserved. Now, we often observe disruptions triggered by events in democratic nations that allow citizens to protest and debate opinions without fear of government suppression or punishment. And in these nations, we are now experiencing how individuals, groups, and information networks present evidence in ways that lead to conclusions that often aligned with our targeted audience's inclinations and assumptions. And unfortunately, opinions are usually shadowed by ignorance, fear, jealousy, and hate. One-way decision-making processes cause people to become blindsided and unable to detect faults or errors in their thinking process and unfortunately their actions. Recent social and political events in democratic nations, fueled vastly by one-way decision-making processes, have been causing disturbances in the core that hold these nations together, which could lead to civil wars. Individuals with a personal, political, or social interest, especially concerning conclusions or the results of research, are more likely to interpret or decode data or gathered information that resembles their life experiences as a reflection of the events occurring immediately around them and even the world. Now, let us investigate just a little further. We may first need to segment how people consciously or subconsciously align themselves with those they share everyday observations and experiences or goals with. In addition to the above, and there are others, most people align themselves, unfortunately, sometimes blindly with others who share most of their identities. Some of these identity parameters, and indeed, like I said before, there are others, revolve around the following. Accomplishments, culture, ethnicity, hardships, hobbies, language, music, nationality, political party, religion, schooling, sexual orientation, and even conspiratorial beliefs. Problems manifest and multiply when conflated identities and characteristics, and even more so, so today, conspiritual beliefs become elements that handicap critical thinking and objective reasoning. Now, what happens when shared ideologies and opinions among our preferred tribe come face to face with conflicting interpretations? Why is it so difficult to change or at least modify an opinion or belief we currently have from being overridden by a thought or idea that is factual or simply superior? Does objective rational thought get thrown out with verification that proves events and physical evidence are correct and indisputable? It appears that many people have deep concerns about changing or updating their belief system because they fear becoming referred to as an outcast. 
This way of thinking prevents them from being honest, and they become unable to separate themselves from a group they want to remain an active and contributing member of. When encountering opposing views, those who find themselves in this or similar situations use a self-serving bias, much like a protective shield, to deflect opposing views. They may fear being ostracized by an individual or group that considers them a comrade in arms, which may become a roadblock to rational thinking and sensitizing a self-serving bias. What can prevent a self-serving bias from inhibiting individuals who often selfishly hold on to one-sided and often naive opinions from becoming unable to see beyond their emotional attachments to their particular belief and allow it to be analyzed and compared? Remaining aware of possible mistakes or inaccuracies and opinions along with any actions we choose to partake in should be employed as a way to focus our views and activities more objectively. And once again, those with a self-serving bias often blame external elements, events, and outcomes for preventing them from obtaining a goal or moving in a positive direction. Regardless of whether an event or action is to blame, the solution should be to avoid festering on any particular event or fault, because doing so will only prevent focusing on a solution. Test any conclusion you both agree and disagree with, and then look for possible and, of course, logical replacements. Search for any events or timestamps that can factually confirm a possible rational conclusion. Keep in mind that any conclusion or assumption you come up with is still a subject for further testing. And don't become deterred if you find yourself in a never-ending search for the truth. Once a self-serving bias is detected or observed, try implementing these or similar steps to filter thoughts or ideas infected with biased preferences. The truth is, changing or updating beliefs and opinions can become an excruciating process for those who feel they must preserve a tradition or legacy. Like I always say, try, don't cry. The solution is to find out what you are crying about and then look for ways to clarify and implement an objective and sometimes painful solution. If the pain doesn't kill you, it will only make you stronger. And the same can be said for searching for and accepting the truth. If you have found what we have to offer of any value, please click on the subscribe and bell buttons below to keep up to date with our current episodes. And if you listen to our podcast, please subscribe and help us spread the word that we have a lot more in common than we think. We're very interested to hear what you have to say. Before season one family, I'm James Thomas in Taipei, Taiwan. And remember to stay strong, safe, and healthy wherever you are in the world.